professional bladesmith. I've been making knives for over 20 years now, um, which is a little, a little shocking to say that out loud, but uh, I've been doing this for most of my life. Uh, I'm, I was really kind of, uh, as a, a child of the 80s and 90s, there were lots of action movies, and in all those action movies, there was like a cool knife. And so that kind of got me thinking, like, wow, you know, these knives are really, really cool. And I was, uh, I was lucky enough to get a job when I was 15 at a cutlery store uh, in Freeport. Uh, and that was kind of a big break for me. Uh, and I got to meet people that used knives professionally, uh, mostly professional chefs. Uh, and that really made me want to make kitchen knives um, and made me want to cook because I love to cook and eat as much as I love to make knives. So... Uh, <laughs> So it was kind of those, the, the combination of those two things that got me into making knives. And with, uh, with knives, you, uh, you're, you kind of, you had to be self-taught when I was getting into this. Now, we have a lot of resources now. I'm also an instructor at the New England School of Metalwork uh, in Auburn, Maine, um, which is a place where you can actually go and take a class and learn how to do this stuff. And there was nothing like that when I got started. So you had, you had about, there were four books that you had to learn from. And, and three of them were kind of bad and misleading. So there was a lot of, a lot of trial and error. And I'm, I'm a bladesmith. You know, I use forging, I use heat, and I use an anvil and a hammer to plastically form the metal into the shape of a knife. So I, I would be specifically a bladesmith. A blacksmith uses, and I use blacksmithing skills to make blades, but a blacksmith makes like iron gates or, you know, fire screens or fireplace tools or cooking implements. So it's kind of two different trades, uh, and at the New England School of Metalwork, we teach all that stuff. Um, you know, we do uh, traditional blacksmithing, um, you know, 18th century stuff, um, to, to, to modern high-tech folding knives with, uh, with very, very precise mechanisms. So there's a whole range, and we do uh, skill sets from, from never hit a piece of hot metal in anger in their life, to people that are really uh, very, very proficient and want to take their skills to the next level. So, cool. so it's, it's, a, it, it's a great resource, and, uh, and I really, really wish that I had it. Uh, it's <laughs> nice to be able to, to make it easier for people that are, that are getting into this, because it is really rewarding. So I, I've been, I've been kind of eyeballing this space here in Vassalboro uh, for a, a couple of years. And uh, right now I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm actually still renting a shop in Portland, and I'm really lucky to have this space. Uh, it's actually a shared spot with uh, a couple of really, really good craftspeople. So it's been really nice to work with them. But it's all the way in Portland, uh, and I spend a lot of my time commuting, you know, Augusta, where, where, which is where I live, to Portland. And, uh, and I, I've always had my eye out for something for something local to me um, that was maybe in kind of a rural setting that, that met my needs. And uh, I, I found this building and I've been, I've been renovating it for the past couple of months and uh, it's been a really fun fun process. So happy to, happy to be here in Vassalboro. So this is just, this is a standard propane style forge. This is actually built for the farrier industry. So another, another trade, farriers, uh, uh, make horseshoes and shoe and shoe horses. So this is a this is for, for that for that industry, but it works really really well for any sort of forging. Um, and it's just a propane powered gas forge. Um, and I'm going to light it up. So cool. uh, the fun the fun thing about about this as a craft is that you can make all your own tools because knives are made out of metal, but also hammers are made out of metal. So I I made this hammer. Um, and you can make, you know, you can make pretty much all, all of your supporting equipment. I mean, except for an anvil. This, this one's a little bit tough for us to make. Um, you know, you need, a, you need a pretty big forge to make an anvil. So I've got, I've got a piece of metal here. And this is a, a piece of high carbon alloy steel that is suitable to make a knife out of. Uh, this is really, really good steel purchased new. Uh, from you know from the factory, I know exactly what's in it, and uh, and treat it correctly, provided I don't screw anything up. It'll make a, 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 a superlative blade, something that will hold a very good edge, will be very very strong, uh, and be very easy to sharpen as well. So so with the with the right with the right care, th this will be that. This is just just a raw a raw piece of material. This is one of my more popular models here. This is 
really just this kind of a, a, a standard gardening utility knife. Um, it really can be used for anything. It comes with a little, a little sheet that you can clip it right to your pocket or to your apron. Um, and it has this little curly cue on the end. This is a traditional blacksmithing touch. This, this, this scroll, uh, this the traditional scroll form. And I, I really like that. And that's what I'm going to be doing for you here. I'm going to be doing this little scroll. I'm going to roll it up. And uh, let's see how it goes. I, I'm judging the color uh, of the metal. I'm looking at it. I, I want to see a bright lemon yellow. The hotter it is, the less work I have to do. So, so I really want to get that, get that nice and hot. This is, this, this, like you look at it, it looks pretty hot. Not quite hot enough. Yeah, that's that's apricot. Yeah, it's all it's all, it's, all, it's all relative. It's all relative. Yeah. We're looking at about 2,100 degrees. And that that's a good a good forty degrees. Yeah. Um, and that that's what I'm looking at. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm looking at. Yeah. 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 Yeah
fun. You know, I, I, I love uh, I love like going to see other crafts people around. Like uh, I get a lot of inspiration from like uh, potters, and basket weavers, and, 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 and painters. And, 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 and Central Maine, there's a lot of like top tier, top tier people. So yeah. there's a lot of good, a lot of good input. And I'm going to hold this over the, the uh, pritchel hole, it's called pritchel. And 
I'm going to hold this over there, and I'm going to come back, and I'm going to just, just kind of put the center of that at just to get it back, the metal head kind of. Kind of. specifically about, about not working with gloves, uh -huh. uh, you know, in the, in the history of blacksmithing, uh, you know, there's never been anything in the records about blacksmiths wearing gloves, even when gloves were available, and that's because, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it actually keeps you safer. You know what's hot. You're not, you know, you know, like this, and th this is tricky because, like, right now, in here, this, uh, this looks dead cold. Like, you can't, you can't tell the difference between this and that. That's still a thousand degrees. So that, that's where you really get burnt, and, uh, and so I'm, I'm conscious of that, which is why you see me, I do this, like I make sure that's under the forge, you know, I don't leave it on an anvil, and it's just, you know, working, working safe. Yeah. And does the anvil itself start to take up heat, or not as much? It will, it? yeah. It will. Yeah. yeah, you know, you know you've really had a, a good, a good productive day, when at the end, like, you can't, you can't even touch this. <laughs> yeah. I, I really do love making kitchen knives. If uh, if I, I could, if I had to only make one one type of knife, it would just be general styles of kitchen knife. Um, and this is kind of my classic German style chef's knife. And German style in the sense that it has a lot a lot of belly. That this angle here has a lot of rock to it. Um, so that's for people that really do a lot of rocking against against a cutting board as opposed to a lift and a chop. Um, and with kitchen knives. Um, Everyone has their own opinions, and everyone's right. So I try to uh, offer a range of kitchen knives that that really fit fit all those needs. Like you know, this would be sort of your, your classic European style, while while something like this would be more of a more of an Eastern style, sort of a more of a lift and a chop. Um, they're they're all they're all made out of uh, for the most part high carbon steel. So uh, these are not stainless steel knives. Uh, they can rust. Um, the upside is. They hold an edge for a very, very, very long time, and they're really, really easy to resharpen. Uh, as you use a knife like this, it'll start to develop a, a patina. It'll start to develop an even layer of oxide as you cut acidic foods, and that oxide um, is really quite, quite beautiful. And it kind of, kind of tells the, uh, the uh, tale of the knife um, over the years, and uh, it's, uh, it's, it's pretty cool. So uh, I think that that material is, uh, is a real, a real benefit to the, to the end user. Um, what's the handle of that one made out? So uh, mo most of these are, are, are just figured main maple, um, and uh, they're they're uh, they're industrially stabilized, so they're actually soaked in a, a resin to make them uh, very very moisture resistant and very very tough. And when when I do that, I have them put a dye in it as well. So this is kind of a fun a fun purple color. And I, I love I love colors. You know, you look at most knives and they're they're black and black and gray and tan stuff like that. So I like that. I love that you have also a color through the like the middle of that. Yeah. Yep. You know, this is a, a it's a it's a composite frame, so it makes the handle a little bit a little bit stronger, a little bit more stable, and again a fun a fun pop of color red there, a green one there, and and really you know it's a lot of a lot of variations on a on a theme to accommodate all of those all of those styles, and this would be more of a more of a French style chef's knife, and this is in my own. Damascus steel. So this uh, this is actually two different types of steel that are forged welded together and folded and folded and patterned to to create that that, that kind of the kind of pattern. Which is uh, it's really fun. It's a lot of work. It looks really cool. So, so how yeah. long? So how long would a knife like this take you? To say with with the with with the, the Damascus, you're looking at about about twelve hours. And I, I always tell people, and I'm, I, you know, I always tell people it's 12 hours and 20 years of doing this pretty, pretty much every day. So, uh, so if, uh, if you know, 
And it's active. It's not like you're sitting at a desk. No, it is. It is a little bit like work. It's <laughs> it fun. Yeah, you definitely, you definitely are, are, are tired at the end of the day, but uh, it's good. I love it. I love it. Um, so yeah, that, that you know, I got a recent a custom order for uh, uh, oyster knives. And I've never made oyster knives before, and uh, so so that's kind of some high tech, high tech oyster knife. Um, again, main uh, main maple. Um, is there a reason that maple is your favorite? Is it just... Um, you know, when I, when I find a nice piece of wood and it calls to me, um, there's, a, there's actually this amazing uh, wood, wood outlet in Mexico, Maine, called Rare Woods. Uh, and I get to go up there and they've got a warehouse full of just stunning, stunning wood. So I make, I make a trip out there, you know, and I, uh, I just find a, find a board that I really, really like and, you know, and, uh, and snap it up. Um, and I also do hunting knives. I, I kind of started out doing hunting knives and carrying knives like that, so that's another, that's another big, big thing. Um, that's where I got, I got my start, so that's kind of a classic, a classic hunting knife. Knives that, that I kind of intend people to carry, um, I'll either do a leather or a molded plastic sheath like this. And uh, this is kind of my, my classic gardening knife pattern. Uh, and this, this has a molded sheath, and it clicks, clicks right in there. Um, so real, real, real positive retention, and that can go right on your pocket or your apron, like so. Yeah. And then here's your knife. And um, do you yeah. make the whole? I do. I wow. do. I, I make. I make. I make everything. I make everything. <laughs> So you're a leather smith and a, yeah. Yes, yes, and uh, mo mostly just because I'm, I'm really stubborn, and uh, I know I know a lot of good good leather workers, but uh, you know it just doesn't look quite right with my eyes. So I like to do I like to do all as, as much as I possibly can. This one was pretty cool. So this is uh, um, th this handle material is actually uh, different kinds of cloth. That um, so I'm a I'm a knife maker, and there are people that just make this material sort of in a boutique way. Um, so this guy, uh, this guy Greg Hansen makes this, and I was able to, 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 to buy this piece. And it's actually pretty, pretty hard to get, um, but it's a, it's a combination of, uh, of canvas and uh, very, very tough. And it looks really, really, really fun. Wow, it's canvas. Yeah. Cool. yeah, it's canvas. Um, and it's, uh, it's got a great, a great grip. Um, it's really resistant to, to, to moisture and stuff like that. So. And yeah, pairing knives are another really, really fun thing. Super sharp pairing knife to use.